Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Hey, everybody. Hey. We got to figure out a way that when they say, and now here's your host, John DePietro and Bob Zagami. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, another, that's another piece of equipment. Another piece of equipment. But anyway. It makes the buttons Bob, easier, similar to what Bill Sell has. Good evening and welcome to our being in New England. It's been a wild two weeks. Yeah, crazy. It's been a wild two weeks. A couple of times I woke up this week, I had no idea where I was. A couple of times the same thing happened last week in Florida. I still I had no idea what day of the week it is. I was just didn't lucky that day. I looked at the calendar and said it was Wednesday and figured we had something to do tonight. You know, when you go about two weeks straight, including the weekends, yep. <clears throat> day of the week is irrelevant. You just want to make sure you have enough nourishment and enough time to uh, to sleep to recover from, you know, the eight or 10,000 steps that we took during those days. That's true. And special thanks to Bernie Cullerton and Bill Sell for filling up our shoes last week. And they did a terrific job while we were down in Florida. So. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this time last week we were in Florida. We were at that, uh, what was it called? Strike it rich or no, Splitsville. It was Splitsville. 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 Which wasn't a divorce bar, but it was a bowling alley. So but it was like uh, three or four or five separate sections. And then they had catered to corporate events. So you had right. different, different parties. So you'd have, depending on how many people were in your group. So it's not that big, long wall of uh, lanes, lanes and yeah. all the noise. Yeah. and what have you. So you were kind of separated into your own little group, which was pretty cool. That was the uh, RV life appreciation party for all of us who do work with the uh, RV life network. Life Network. And Andy Rabinowitz. Yep. And before we go any further, we should say that this show is brought to you by our friends in Ellington, Connecticut at Lee's RV and Auto Ranch or Lee's Auto and RV Ranch. But either way, we got to meet Brian again. All those Brian and his gang were up yep. from Connecticut in the Boston show. And they had a great week. They had a great display. And then they're their display spilled over into the girl camper display. Yeah, so they was, loaned they loaned Janine a little Max little guy little Max trailer, which yeah. was the kind of a focal point within the girl camper pavilion, which was uh, incredibly successful. And we hope that it'll get uh, bigger and better next year. So we want to yeah. thank Lee's Auto and RV Ranch for sponsoring the show. I think next week. Well, actually, this is. This is yeah. This is probably the last week. But if we don't get a new sponsor in time, maybe we'll give them a give them a bonus week. So we gotta been so busy the last two weeks, we haven't really pushed anybody on sponsorship. So that'll right. be our goal the next couple of weeks. But one of the people that was pushing us, keeping us up late, I see him here, Kevin Horky, who um, took us out to dinner. Where do we go? That Eddie Merlot. What a good look. Eddie Merlot's or Eddie Merlot's? Yeah, Eddie Merlot's. Eddie Merlot steakhouse in boston i had never heard of it before no. but we had been to del frisco's prior to that we had been to morton's but thanks to kevin and his suggestion and his credit card we were able to enjoy a great steak now we didn't get home till about 11 o'clock we got home at 11 i know kevin and his his compatriot um they hit scott, at least two scott they scott taylor right yeah, They hit at least two more bars that night, which I say so appropriately as you're sipping your Jack Daniels. Well, but we also have to, you know, acknowledge Kevin's work ethic because we had an 8.15 right. reservation. Right. Yep. John, John and I went early just to make sure they had Jack Daniels. And <laughs> then we waited and then... Kevin sent me a text saying that him and Scott were going to be late because even though the show was closed, closed. He, was, he was supporting Chad with the Cougars and the Montanas, he was closing a deal. And we said, you stay right there, which he would have done anyways. He didn't need us to tell him that, but uh, he was going to stay until they closed the deal. So and they did. 
good yeah. work ethic with Kevin Hawkey from Keystone. Yeah. We should tell our audience before we before we go over here and, and say hello to them uh, individually that we have basically two shows lined up for you tonight. We have a, a summary of the Boston show and a, and a summary of the Florida show. We're going to do as much as we can if we have to carry it over to next week. We, we've got so many videos. We've got so many pictures of all the activity that took place. Um, but one of the things that in New England, we don't have to hold our heads to anyone because that New England show was a great show. And all of the national reps that were there said they love coming to the show because it is a buyer's show. And Bob, maybe you want to get into that because there's all this talk about, oh, the industry is starting to tank and blah, 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 blah. But according to our two biggest vendors, our two biggest dealers, that was hardly the case, right? Oh, yeah. The, uh, Jeff Hirsch, we got a video. that We're going to be posting a video from Jeff and Chad probably tomorrow for those interviews that John did there. They're too long for the show, but Jeff told him it was the best Boston show ever and <clears throat> was in has probably been in 40 maybe 50 uh shows yeah yep. same thing with chad uh, the activity level was so high that by the end of saturday he had sold as many units as they sold in four days last year last year yeah yep. now uh, i i do want to jump down to florida for a minute because we did finally get to meet christy spencer who is the marketing guru at keystone rv for the lines and you know, it's funny, you, you go into that Keystone booth and all you have to do is say, yo, is, is Hawkey around here? And they, they all know him. Every per I think every person in the Keystone booth knows Kevin. And they say, yep, I'll get him. He's down in this unit here. He's doing something else. But uh, it was no. great to finally meet Christy. We've talked to her. She sent us a ton of stuff. She supports us for whatever we need on the Cougar and Montana brands and the hideouts. And She's got a great staff, so... Uh, if, uh, hold on. Before you get rid no, 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 go back to that. Go back to that. You notice she's standing closer to me than she is to you. Well, that's because you were approaching her space, John. Well, the fact is, <laughs> she was closer to me than to you. But okay. anyway, uh, uh, you know what? Let, why don't we look at who we've got here because there's so many people to thank. And, and look at the first few people here I see. We all saw them in Boston, uh, Jerry did a great job. Um, I think we have, I don't know if you could find that slide of the program with the local experts that Walter put together. Walter's with us tonight. I think Walter must be back in Florida. Um, what slide? I don't remember doing anything with Walter. Uh, no, that, that, that um, seminar that Walter came up the idea with to have um, our friend Scott Bear and the local people. I didn't. I didn't have anything programmed in here tonight with that. It was. It was very good. In fact, it was so good yep. that we're seriously thinking of doing the New England RV and Camping Expo again. Only this time, we're going to do it in person. That's the uh, seminar and education program we put on in 2021 when we could not have a show because uh, that seminar was extremely <clears throat> hard to see. Uh, is Maria on yet? I don't see Maria. You have her picture there? We, we had, Actually, Maria and her husband, Scott, came all the way across the fair. We were texting a couple of days before the show. She was going to be at the show. We weren't sure if we could meet, but we had the pleasure of meeting her and her husband in person, had a chance to spend a little time with her at the show, and it was a fun time. Yep. And uh, speaking Maria? about people. people Maria? Did you say Maria? Uh, uh, Maria Galanti. Yeah, Maria, Maria's on. Right, Maria's on here, 704. She is on, yeah. okay. Yep, yep. Again, another situation. The women flock to me. You must and, be and a, I don't, I, I don't be a, even, a, just a chick magnet. I know. don't even do you anything know? for her. But, you know, again, another example. Pictures don't lie. I guess, I guess. So now, let's go ahead. Well, Where you got one more, because this, this was a great one. Yeah, I don't know who it is, though. You don't you, remember this one? Yeah, I remember the picture because I took it. Well, this is the veteran who flagged us down. We were making our way around on the golf cart. He noticed us. He recognized us, flagged us down, and said he watches the program every week, never contributes. He's an honor veteran from World War II. He's, that's his uh, honor flight shirt he, where they fly the veterans from World War II down to Washington, D.C., 
We yep. had a great chance to meet Rick and and talk with him and thank him for his service. So we were we were getting uh, we we're going to get we were getting recognized. I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, well, the reality yeah. is it happened in Boston on several occasions where people, you know, I thought they were looking behind me when they said I watch you on TV all the time. Yeah, uh, and well, you know what? Talk, you know, talk, where, who are we with? Um, never take that for granted. No, who are we with? We were talking to somebody and we thought they wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Austin Clark. Well, Austin at Grand Design. We're at Grand Design. Now, if you know anything about the corporate structure at Austin Clark, Don Clark is his dad and Don is the president. Okay. And he, which makes him also a senior vice president at Winnebago. So we're, we're interviewing him and then we're talking with him at talking to him after the interview. And there were some people that were right next to us that were, were listening to the conversation. <clears throat> and Bob and I independently thought that they wanted to talk to Austin. So we said to them, go right ahead. And they said, we watch you every week. We want to tell you how much we love Doe. And it couldn't have been greater coming in front of Austin because we will, um, you know, talk to them about sponsorship. Yeah, they, they were um, waiting for us. So who, who so else cool. do we have? Uh, let's maybe go up to the top. Jerry Plant yeah. retains his number one position. Yep. Dante is there. Uh, Lutz, Florida. Is that? Wait, 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 wait. Go back to Bill Sell. Now, do you have that picture that I sent to you? Uh, I don't see Bill Sell. I, Bill Sell is right under Jerry and above Dante. Oh, right there. Yeah, right now, there. What, I, I didn't get, you know, if it was in that group of 20, I don't have it. <laughs> okay. So we had a nice team picture with Bill and me and you. Uh, no, um, I don't. I don't. I, did didn't our, get that, I didn't get that group. We did our Saturday morning broadcast, yeah. our pre show, our first ever RV pre show, pre game show. And it worked out great. And um, we had people come up to us and say, we well, watched the show. And, and it was great. And without Bill Selby, we wouldn't have had that show. That's, that's absolutely right. And yep. we got... Now, Did you now Jim, Jim, is under, Jim is under the weather. He's, he's not feeling... I did talk to him today. Um, he's getting ready for the Hartford show. He's, he's pretty much all set for that. And... He did a seminar also on understanding RV roofs at the Boston show. Very well attended. The guy knows more about roofs than we do, we know about doorknobs. I, you know, uh, if you got any questions about roof, well, let me let me do it. Let me do it even better. Hey, we're at the Boston RV and Camping Expo. We're with Jim from New England RV Roof. Jim, tell us what you mean by New England RV Roof. What do you do? Uh, we are the authorized. Flex Armor Application Center for New England, John. Okay. So we do a roof, single, seamless, monolithic roof. No parking, no seams, guaranteed for life. Okay, I'm looking at some, um, you got a great little uh, display here, but talk to me about this stuff that's right here. Well, on this side of the demo, this is a traditional rubber roof that's on an RV. And you, we're showing how here are all the components, here's the caulking. And this is the part that fails. Predominantly, it's, it's the parking. On this side is our roof. This part here? Yep. So this is chemically bonded um, to, the, to the roof that we're working on. And that's why it's just one single monolithic roof. Hmm. Now, if you've got a new unit, you probably really don't even, you don't have to worry about any leaks, right? No, not necessarily. You remember, a membrane on an RV, usually the manufacturers will give you a 12-year warranty. Fine print, the caulking that comes on these rigs is our only warranty for six months. Okay. And so that's, that's the part that changes very quickly. That's the difference. So if an owner, even with a new one, is inspecting their roof and making sure there's no cracks or gaps in their caulking, they'll be fine. Hmm. And a lot of times they'll tell folks, with a brand new one, Maybe you don't have to have a new roof for three or four years. But I'll tell you, John, the more experienced the camper is, the more campers they've owned in the past. If they're buying a new camper and they want to protect that investment, they do it right off the get-go. 
right like that. Yep. Do it right away. Right away. So, um, in this weather, this crazy New England weather, where we've had trees come down and branches come down, uh, and is there a chance that something may have done a damage to your roof, but then blew off, and you never know it until the springtime? It happens all the time. So. If it goes for two, three months, it can be some damage. Could be. So people can, I'm, I'm sure springtime's a busy time for you. Um, actually, this year, all the time is busy for us, John. But t traditionally, the spring, before the season opens up, and then in the fall when people are putting them away. And since we do these all year long in, in a controlled environment, yeah. we just keep working. And I, I will tell folks that... Um, a roof should be looked at at least once every three months because that's how quick it can change up there. Yep. 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 And tell us where you're located, Jim. We're located in Plainville, Massachusetts. Which is where? It's right off of Route 1A. Uh, it's exit 38 off of 495. And we're a mile and a half down past the Rentham Outlets. Ah, great. So you can always leave the leave Drop the, the rig off you. and go shopping. Go shopping. <laughs> Spend more money at the, uh, at the outlets. Can, yeah. yeah, the wives love that. The husbands, I get the dirty look. <laughs> Help the local economy. So um, we want to thank you for spending time with us. It's a sprayed roof. It's it's really a... Uh, well, let me ask you this. How much business do you get from referrals from people who've had work done and then told their friends? Ooh, I'd say 50% of my referrals come from trade shows. Okay. I'd say another 40% comes from Google... Uh, maybe 35% comes Google and Facebook, and the rest is all referrals to, from all referrals. that we've already done. Yep. People that uh, our viewers talk. Well, absolutely. They talk, and uh, when they say good stuff, it's always good. And we want to thank you again, and hope you have a great day. Thank you, John. Hey, we're at the Boston. Oh, they want to hear it over again. It's a, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an amazing business to see what he can do. Uh, and he did, I won't, I won't mention the name, but he actually was telling me today that a major manufacturer, not, not, a, not one of the big guys, let's say a manufacturer is going to be offering Flex Armor as an option on brand new units. I'll let Jim make those announcements when he's ready to do it, but a manufacturer is actually going to make it available as an option on brand new units to do that. So I was flashing some things in there. If you notice, Rick Kessler was uh, cooking some, some Kessler chicken. was telling us what he had for supper. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Doing that. Let's so over uh, French onion chicken bread, by the way. Yeah. Did, did we not see Dante? Did Dante call at all? We didn't. Uh, we missed Dante each was other. There Thursday. We were there Thursday. Yeah, we were, you know, we were talking about the Boston show and, and the, I do have the videos that you did send me about. Hi, everyone. That's the wrong one. We had, we had great crowds. Uh, I don't think we tied our record for 2020. We were a little bit less than that. Uh, and, and Tampa also was a little bit less. Uh, Tampa set a record last year at 84,000 people, and they came in at 79,000 people. But the but right. same thing with Tampa. You know, one of the things in it's when you talk to people around the country, the shows are very well attended this year. And even when you had a situation where you had less people at the show, they had more sales. Yeah. The difference yeah. this year was the attitude of the consumer – they were smiling. They were happy. Uh, the competitors were smiling at each other and talking to each other. It was just a, a festive environment. I think I called it electric on one of the interviews that I did. But it was just that kind of an environment that no matter who you talk to, they were happy. They were glad to be at the show, glad to see all the new products. But whether it was Tampa or Boston, uh, I'm sure Joe will have the same situation with uh, – Connecticut this weekend, we've got nine Nerve to members <clears throat> in the Connecticut show this weekend. And if I could put my finger on it, oops, did I just see it? Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I have so many, so many. Bill's, 
Bill, where is Bill Sell when we need him? Yeah, I know. To do that. You can't believe that. how many I got. I'll, uh, I will dig it out and show you. But the Northeast RV and Camping Show this weekend in Hartford, the convention center, uh, 12 to 8, 12 to 9, I think, on Friday. No, 12 to 8 on Friday, 10 to 9 on Saturday, and 10 to 5 on Sunday. So if you get a chance to go down there, we have been posting some of the ads from some of the dealers who are down there. Chad will have another big display uh, from Pete's, and I, I will call up the uh, other slide when I get it. But, uh, you know, like I say, attendance-wise at the shows has been incredible. And the numbers did come out today that last year we did 493,000-plus RVs, new RVs, and that is the third largest year on record. So, so th the thing that I think is driving it, John, is it's mainstream right now. A lot of people are talking about it. We've gotten through the COVID uh, pandemic. We've got a lot of people interested in RVs, both from national media, local media. And so we have a much broader base of potential customers. Right. That now, Bob, you just said... We got through the COVID era. Now, the reality is the COVID era, era got through to us because RVing took off because of COVID. And, you know, I remember when we were on that plane flying back with, with um, we had just left Kessler in Palm Springs and we said, uh-oh, what's going to happen now? And little did we know that within a month, we knew it was going to happen. There was going to be more of a demand for RVs because like um, our friend Dwayne Cyrus at Winnebago said, people are not going to give up their vacation regardless. They might not be able to go to a hotel. They might not be able to go to a cruise. They might not be able to go to a theme park, but they're going to vacation. And vacation they did, which led the RV industry to its biggest years in, on record. I mean, and not just, you know, a 10% growth, but some of those, some of those month to month growths were 30 and 40 percent right. Right. over the prior year. So um, we certainly didn't limp through the COVID situation. We we um, jogged through it, I guess. That'd be the best thing. Well, but, and we, we, we do want to thank Dave Kelly, the uh, executive director of the Florida RV Trade Association, because we were the only media people at the show who had the benefit of a golf cart. And if you've ever been to the Tampa show, it is huge. And there's just simply no way my back would have held out for that show. So thank now, you, Dave, very much. I find something very interesting, Zagami. The slides that you're in, you found. But all the slides I sent to you that other people are in, like Walter, like Jerry, like Scott Barr, you can't find. But no, I, I found them. They were in that zip file that wouldn't unzip. The Zagami pictures all become available. I think, ladies and gentlemen, we see a pattern here. He I is into I major. Don't know. I don't, I don't know what there you go again. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Petro. No, tell, mean, people, tell people what that is. Yeah, they didn't name any RVs after you. This is the new Brinkley Model Z. Yeah. Brinkley's a manufacturer. They haven't set up anybody in New England just yet. They were there with General RV uh, down in Florida. Um, Bill Fennick, Ron Fennick, who were, who were the founders of Grand Design. Um, who I introduced you to. Daily and, uh, oh. Green oh, Kevin's going to be here in Hartford? Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kevin's going to be here uh, in Hartford. Goldenberg. Oh, I forget his name. Nate. How can I Nate. His name? Nate. Nate. Nate Goldenberg, who happens to be Sherm Goldenberg's son. They are the founders, but that was their... It's a beautiful looking coach, both inside and out. The inside looks like a residential home, but they were nice enough to name that one after me. So, you know, John, you just, you know, yeah. you, haven't got, you haven't got there yet. They just haven't got to the point where they want to name an RV after you. What other pictures of yourself do you have there? Um, let's Maybe see. Boston or... I don't know. I'd have to look. They're too, they're too small. Um, yeah. We got, well, that, oh, was the, we go. that was the Lippert display at Tampa. In, that in an unair conditioned, in is, an unair conditioned hall. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was 
one of the issues, they had problems with the electrical contractor and many of the vendors were late getting electricity into their displays. Right. Yep. There's what is Tim, that? Uh, you can see yeah. the intake yeah. units at Tim's RV and I, I did talk to them and said, you know, we really want to see Intex in the show next year. So hopefully they'll give a lot more support to uh, Tim and we'll get Tim <laughs> and Tim's RV into the Boston show and you can see all the Intex there. But if you can't see them now, it's certainly going to go out to Route 2 in Irving, Irving Massachusetts Irving. and yeah. see them there. Yeah. Uh, why don't you do a little talking about this, DePetro? Well, you said the mood was electric and Zagami. It was electric, and our friends at Winnebago, last year they introduced um, the first concept vehicle uh, to be all electric, and you know, which is several steps away from reality. But as our friend, I think you'll see that on the Camp Report show this week, the in-depth um, story we did with Russ Garfin, the vice president of Class Bs and Cs for Winnebago. This is a Ford Transit. And it has been um, put together into an RV and it is all electric. So the motor in the front there, see that license plate there, right above where that license plate bracket is, right, right above that is where you plug in. And then in the back, um, there are those big lit lith lithium ion or ion lithium, whatever it is, Walter, help me out, batteries that go on the floor. So all of the power in the back is totally separate from the power in front. And one thing that they did here, if you look up top above the windshield, you see that black content there. That is solar panels, flexible solar panels, so that you'll be able to run the air conditioner off the battery and the solar and not have to use the house battery. Now, anybody who knows anything about electric vehicles on the car side knows that when you add um, any kind of climate control, whether it's heating or cooling, it does a job on the range. So what this allows it to do is to keep that range up there. And um, I think they said it, it can go 108 miles, depending upon terrain, depending upon temperature, depending upon a whole bunch of things. Um, and Russ said that's not enough to sell to the general public yet. They've got to work on several well, more aspects of that. Let's clarify that in the sense that they're being prudent and they have built 12 of these. We talked about them uh, earlier on our other show uh, today, but they're going to build, they have 12 built and they're going to be giving them to the media, but also to consumers and also YouTube influencers. So you can, we'll, we'll, We'll put the uh, URL up, but you can write to Winnebago and request one. Doesn't mean that you will get it, but they're going to take you know the better part of this year. And during that time, they'll be doing the continuous improvement on the batteries, on the solar panels. This is an emerging technology that's brand new. And and I always tell people like liken it to your first computer. I mean, your first computer probably had. 30 megabytes on a 12 inch disc. And now you've got that computer in your phone. Well, that's what you're going to see over the next five to 10 years. And, and I think five years from now is probably a good time frame for when you'll really see the, the, the electricity, the electric RVs, electric motorhomes, and, and that technology really taking hold. That doesn't mean that people won't bring them out, but you're going to, as John said, you're going to have to have more range you're going to have to have more towing capacity if they bring out the pickup trucks but it's a reality it's coming uh, i didn't see any others at the show but we know uh, airstream is working on some thor motor coach told us that they got a couple that are ready to go uh for testing and and beta testing to show it but it is a real thing and uh i think yeah i did post a, a video from mike wenlin who was fortunate to have a test drive and him and Jennifer were at the show and we posted that one and we got one from John when we dig through all of the uh, files. Uh, he's got a great interview with Russ Garfin that goes into a little bit more of the technical stuff, which was way ahead, way, way beyond John and uh, yep. my yep. technology. 
One thing, one thing we do know is that it's 7.30, so it's time to play our mid-show commercial <coughs> for our friends. Let's, let's, and, um, and I know we've got a lot more pictures of product see. to talk let's, about. That's Boston. Well, let's just talk teardrops. Hi, everyone. I'm Grace, and this is Stephanie. We're from Lee's Auto and RV, and today we wanted to show you the teardrop trailers and the conveniences that they offer with all of the things that make it so easy to camp in them. Yeah. So if you stick around after this video, uh, we're just going to showcase some of our favorite things as women who sometimes do travel alone. Um, we'll show you some of our favorite things about these teardrop campers. So um, call or visit us and let us know if you have any questions. We are one of the biggest dealers for little guys in the area. We have three different sizes and uh, we'd love to show them to you. Come on down, guys. <laughs> Back great people, that. great I, people at least. And we I should tell it. people for those of for those that were wondering uh, about the web the website to um, possibly get a chance to use one of those Winnebago electric vehicles. It's winnebago.com slash all dash electric, or just go to the Winnebago website. And the electric stuff is all. Yeah, they get they got a lot of videos up there. Uh, I did just quickly download the. Uh, Folks, these are our NERVD members who are going to be at the show in Hartford this weekend, the uh, Campers Inn group from Union, Connecticut, Crowley uh, RV, who had a tremendous uh, show also in Boston. He had a tremendous display of Class B motorhomes. Sherry Fuller, of course, you can't have an RV show in New England without Sherry Fuller. And she's just the Energizer Bunny. Right, John? Absolutely. You know, Hemlock yeah, Hill. Know with her is, somewhere and kevin did you say kevin i haven't checked the comments but kevin's kevin going to be at the hemlock hill booth okay and lee's auto and rv ranch our sponsor for the last six months will be there Todd longview, Emerson. longview rv will be there new england rv route we just talked about jim convoy pizza rv and rv1 superstores which is now blue compass blue rv Chris. they own the uh, former vermont Country Camper, New Hampshire Country Camper, and their newest store in Connecticut. So they will be on the show floor there also. Yep. So that uh, <laughs> talked about long uh, pizza. Rather, pizza is going to show these this little uh, interesting unit that comes in out of I believe England. They showed it a couple of years ago. Uh, new Camp is it's under the New Camp name. It's called Barefoot. All fiberglass will be an interesting uh, product to see on the show floor. They will have that, and I'll probably have a couple of more here. Longview, this is an interesting, an 18-foot trailer, probably a couple's trailer, small, compact, east-to-west Delaterra. And they are also selling the east-to-west -west, uh, motorhomes, Class C motorhomes. Yeah. Now, speaking of 18, 18 feet, 17 feet, yep. um, I saw – a motorized unit in Tampa all over by itself, way over by itself, like an orphan called a Wiggum that is on a Fiat body. It's made in Verona, Italy, and um, it's not quite ready for sale yet in the U.S., but they said 17 feet. And it was a bed that came down from the top and some cushions that folded down below. And it was amazing. I thought it was 23, 24 feet. And it was 17 feet. So, you know what? We also saw the return of, well, not the return. We saw the real, the real coming out party, if you will, of the super seas, which were all over the place. And, and they're in Boston. I don't know if you've got that picture of the one I sent from Pete's. Uh, no, not on the, uh, that was in that group of 20 that didn't, yeah. didn't quite make the uh, cut. Yeah. Uh, we were, we had hoped to have the grand prize winner. 
uh, of the Quadrini electric bike. And <laughs> at the last minute, she got asked to work overtime. But Tamara from Franklin, Mass., uh, won it. We are going to try to have her on next week. She says she's never won anything in her life. And she is an active camper. So we want to try to get her on the show next week to talk about winning the uh, Quadrini electric bike. And those are interesting. And, and Bob Quadrini will also be exhibiting at the Northeast RV show. Uh, he is going to, he's not yet a member of NERVDA. He is going to join as soon as I send him an invoice. So John and I had a chance to have dinner with him one night and talk about electric bikes and where they are there also. The other yep. shout out I want to give is somewhat unrelated, but certainly we, we like to promote our multi-generational families in Nervda. We love the mega dealers too, but we, everybody, you know, when you get together with people from all around the country, they talk about New England and how many generate, how many dealerships we have that are multi-generation. And this is Olivia Grace Meckelson, who is Bruce Meckelson's daughter, and she's the granddaughter of the founders. They were founded in 1967. So they are 55 years old in 2022 and be 56 years old, but she just received her master's degree with an emphasis on marketing from Southern New Hampshire University. So here comes the third generation of Meckelsons, and we look forward to great things from Grace and uh, in the career up at Meckelson RV. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Got any more picks we can talk about? Yeah. And before I do that, I want to do this because uh, I don't know if it was Jerry that mentioned it or Estelle, but somebody mentioned that the uh, campsites down at Scusset Beach, the state campgrounds, they're open now. They're, you can not right now. You can have reservations beginning February fifteenth at nine a.m. for any for the uh, what does DCI stand for? Department of Conservation and Recreation. Okay. <coughs> All right. So, That's go, it says it right there. so be, be aware because I know Jason and Walter and the Caboses, they like they like to camp down there. People really like that particular park. Like that place. Yep. Well, let me run through some of the pictures and see what we can find here. If you have any questions, folks, feel free to post them over on the right. We'll be happy to answer them. Um, all right, Cold Springs show, uh, after show sale continues this weekend up in Ware, New Hampshire. That's this, okay. And got the barefoot. Mentioned Hemlock Hill, so you want to stop in and say hello to Chris and Jason, and Kevin will be there to help them out. Pete will be there with his big display. And what do we got here? Oh, this, this, okay. Let me see if I can find the one that goes with it. Talk about this. This is kind of interesting. Okay. <clears throat> I love those blue socks, by the way. Um, this is the Winnebago Adventure Wagon, which is very interesting. Remember back in the 60s, if you were a hippie, I didn't realize you had. <laughs> it matches the carpet, like in, like in Boise State. So, um Remember those back are, the, those are John's grandchildren. Yeah. In, in the 60s and the 70s, um, people would take these old vans and just throw a mattress in them, maybe put some of that fake um, shelving paper on it to look like wallpaper, and take off. And what they did that, they were sometimes they were plumbers, sometimes they were electricians, sometimes they were carpenters. Well, Fast forward 50 years later, and Winnebago has come out with something that they partnered with Adventure Wagon um, to use a basically a stripped down. Uh, is it a Dodge or Ford? What is it? It is, um, yeah, I think it's the ProMaster. The ProMaster. Um, if you look, if you look at the flooring of that, you can see that there's all these riveted grooves where they can, everything in there is modular. See that um, uh, over on the right, I'm pointing to it. That's really good. Uh, yeah. But the bed comes out, the sink comes out, those cabinets up top come out and you can, you can use the van during the week as a work van. And then 
uh, that particular unit was a four wheel drive one, if I recall correctly. Mm. And then within, within a 10 minute period, um, take out your work stuff and put in your play stuff and head to the mountains. This is yeah, not. It was, it was interesting. They had two of them different. on display, and these things come out in minutes. You can get extra chairs if you want to have a four seat. <laughs> You have all these modular items. And what they did overnight, they had two vans on display overnight. They actually took the modules out of one and put them in the other. But they said to us, it only took them about 20 minutes to take everything out of one van and put it in the other. So you can buy different modules based on your lifestyle. And the thing that was really intriguing is the fact that you could be a tradesman or some use it for work during the day or during the week and then have yourself a motorhome on weekends. And, and Arthur, I mean, uh, Walter said it best. It's Lego for our being. Ah, good, good catch there, yeah. And another, Lego's on the news today because they're moving their offices from either Rhode Island or Connecticut to Massachusetts. From Connecticut, yeah, from Connecticut to Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. So uh, it's so true. It's all modular, and you can take what you want, leave what you want, and all those shelves up on the top move. So you might not need all of them. Take what you need. Me, and buy what you need. So I'm going to jump over to the comments and go innovative the bottom again. Um, Audrey says, waiting for that email was insane. Covers Scusset, Horseneck, and Water Winter Island. Okay, thank you for that. That's a DCR. Andy, Andy Parks is on. Andy won some tickets to the show. Let us know what you thought of the show, Andy. Adam, uh, Walter Burns, what's this Mr. Burns at Easy Care have to say? Boston, Tampa, all these shows are great to confirm people love to see the new models and enjoy traveling and camping. Thanks for all you two do. Okay. Um, do that. And you get a chance to meet uh, Mr. Hawkey at the uh, Hemlock Hill display this weekend in Connecticut. So go up and introduce yourself to him. He loves to talk RVs. But better than that, he loves to sell RVs. So the real question this weekend is who's going to sell more Cougars, Kevin Horky or the Hemlock Hill sales team? Or they'll, or they'll combine forces. They'll combine, they'll combine forces. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, Kessler, Bob and John, what kind of post-Boston show retail activity are your dealers getting? And are they getting? Uh, so that's... You know, we, that's we have, a question, Kessler. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of finishing up a survey for our dealers, Rick. <laughs> I haven't talked to them because they they were busy breaking down Boston and getting stuff ready for yeah. uh, Connecticut. However, Bob, every dealer that we talk to, every dealer without exception, and nobody come up to us and said, oh, you know, they're just not buyers this year. Nobody did that, okay? But well, there are a couple of dealers that you talked about, I can't remember what the dealer was, but they said they get business from that show for the entire year. Who, who was that dealer? That it was Scott Silver from Cold Springs. Okay. And Cold Springs. We hear okay. similar from Chad and, and from campers in because they yep. get, they get to build a relationship with them. But you know, even, uh, you know, sometimes you have a show and the big guys by nature, they get a big boot, they get a lot of traffic. So you'd think that they might, do better than the others. But if you look at it as a percentage of the business they had in the past, and uh, one of our smaller dealers was at the show, I'm not going to say who it was, but he set a goal of 10 units. And now companies like Chad and, and Cameras Inn were up around 100 units for the show. Uh, but this dealer, when I saw him on Sunday night, had already sold 15 units. That's 50% more than his projected target, which was yeah. a good target for a small dealer. But that's the, that's the kind of activity that, that you saw at the show. And, and as I said earlier, even if you have shows this year, and we were talking to uh, the president of General RV, who they do not have a presence here in New England, and he had done some shows out in the Midwest, and they were down about 20% on some of those shows attendance wise, but their sales were up. So we're getting more qualified people. And when you look at the audience, you know, I always survey my uh, audiences for my introduction to RVs and RV lifestyle. 
And it held true again. One of the things that we do really well in the Boston show, and our dealers appreciate it, is in my surveys of the audience, 50% of the people, and I'm talking about nine seminars in four days, 50% of the people were attending their very first RV show. That means that our advertising and marketing, both at the local and national level, is reaching new people new prospects for the dealers. And that's why they go to the shows. Who else can they meet? And also in those seminars, 90% of the people did not own an RV, but they came to the show to buy one or they're very close to it and they may not buy at the show, but they'll probably go to an open house this week or next week because they would have made their final decisions at the show itself. Now, one thing that Tampa did have because of it's it's located where it's located and at this time of year, um, is test drive opportunities. And we saw many of the people taking the big class A's out, uh, same as Hershey does. Boston, you can't do it because you're located in the city. Um, but usually what happens is people that come to the dealership in the following weeks take a ride and they become more and more interested. And the other thing, Bob, that I think was an interesting to note that even on Wednesday and Thursday in Tampa, we saw a wide range of ages of people, including several couples that I had an opportunity to speak with that are road schooling their children. And I think that, you know, whether you, whether you think that it happened much before COVID or not, I mean, COVID really gave it that opportunity to um, present itself without, um, you know, very easily. But mm-hmm. Road schooling is here to stay. And we saw people, actually, we saw them again, even at the, um, at the RV Life event on, on Wednesday night. Yeah. And talking, talking to Dave Kelly, uh, he, he noted that this year on Wednesday and Thursday, which traditionally are left for the senior citizens or the more mature people that are already retired, and this year, both on Wednesday and Thursday, you, it was a complete mix of everything from 19-year-old kids to, you know, that veteran that uh, called us out was 95 years old, and he was still out looking at the RBs. So, and there were a lot of young families with children. The other thing that I thought was amazing in Tampa, keep in mind, Tampa is outside of the Florida State Fairgrounds. So almost everything is outside. There's a couple of buildings for the uh, supplier and accessory companies. But I, I told Dave that he should seriously look at uh, developing another revenue source for the show. Zagami, Zagami, I'm okay. going to warn you on this. I, you you did said this today. I'm going to warn you right now. There's a lot of people, as I look on this list, there's a lot of people like Audrey that you're going to you're gonna offend. So I'm oh, warning sorry. you, they, 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 gentlemen, right now, you may want to mute your no, TV. No. See, Zagami's I, coming up with something that is 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 controversial and i don't think it should be done but john I, go I, ahead I, Zanani, john, because you're, you're only in it for the money that's I, you're only I, in it for the money. It, i can get the away money. with it because they love me john yeah they're not going to love you after, i'm but, telling you right now folks you're not going to even have any respect for zagami especially you kessler you can write this down right now. Uh, so here, <laughs> zagami is going to burn bridges I, he says what he's going to say right now I and we're told, out of time, everyone. Join us I next told, week. I told, <laughs> I told Dave <laughs> Kelly he should have another line item under ticket sales. So you have adults, you have children, veterans, first responders. There should be a line for dogs. Every other person had a dog. Not he dog. To charge for oh, dogs. Dog. Charge for the dog. Hey, somebody's got to clean up after these dogs. They're all over <laughs> the place. A little chihuahua that wouldn't shut up when we were rocking down, driving down the aisle. Everything from Chihuahuas to Great Danes, but there were hundreds, thousands of dogs at the show. So if they, yeah. you want to tear me apart, go ahead and tear me apart. I got two dogs. They're right here. Yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah. See? But I, don't more... take, I don't take them to an RV show. See? Well, you name them RV. Right but if I but did, I name five them. Bucks each for the dogs, John. Okay. Okay. You got to admit, the dogs, I mean, there were dogs everywhere, and it would have been a good revenue source. But they were pretty well behaved, except that one damn chihuahua. Right, they were. That just kept yip, yip, yipping away. 
And we saw people sometimes with two and three dogs. They have twin dog strollers down there in Florida too. Um, I didn't see any kids in strollers. I saw dog strollers. Dogs in the strollers. Um, right. But now, Kevin, you agree with me that that there were a lot of dogs down there. Convoy, I have three Cavaliers and I support. Wow. So, yeah, that's because you exhibit at the shows, Convoy. I think he's taking advantage of people who, who you know, the, the other option is then they leave the dogs in the RV. And, you know, especially for those. You leave, people them, you leave them home and you get a dog sit. You know, get a dog sitter. Yeah, but, but these people you, love as these long dogs. as you have pet monitoring systems in the RVs, you're, you're taking the temperature and humidity and give you the alert on your smartphone. You know, we, we live in a uh, highly sophisticated electronic technology type society, so you can protect all of that, John. Right. I'm doing however, I'm doing it with however, sure. there were hundreds of coaches that didn't have power. They did. They did have a lot of problems with the electrical contractor, right? Yeah, they did. Uh, uh, see what I got here. <laughs> That's too this, funny. This was this was Tampa. They have two buildings and over four hundred accessory suppliers in them, and that that was not Saturday and Sunday. That was probably Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday. It was yep. just crazy. Uh, you know, like I say, people were all over the place. But it's That's a different it. type of show. It's outdoor. They get a lot of people. Now, now, how come you weren't so close to this woman, Demetra? Uh I was, but she just, she, I can't say it on screen. So John and I spent some time in the RV Life uh, booth. display and yeah. booth because that's who, that's who carries our camper report show. And we also had the opportunity to oh. MC their little get together for all the people that contribute to their success. Great I was going to tell, suggest Walter to go over there to get a t-shirt, Walter. I don't know if you had the opportunity to go to our booth. Did he miss it? If that's, you're still here. That's, no, he, the, that's the Lippert display again. We're going to try to, if you were at our show and you saw the girl camper pavilion, you saw the uh, interior displays from Campco, Lippert and progressive insurance. And we're talking to all three of those about uh, expanding their engagement, well, which he had is, his uh, well, Walter was wearing his RV Life t-shirt. Did you go to the booth, Walter? Did you go by the booth and say hello to our people? I don't know if you had a chance you, to find it. Did you get a t-shirt? No, he had, He was wearing it because I every year I take care of Walter and bring him, he and Donna, a t-shirt from um, September, you know, from Hershey. Uh -huh. And I give it to him at the uh, Halo's Wish event down at Normandy Farms. So they were back to IRV2. That's the, that red battery is the house battery. And you can see all the other things there. So that's, the Winnebago, that's the Winnebago ERV2. Winnebago. And yep. they, they have a separate lithium battery system for the house activity. And then the one that comes with the Ford Transit EVAN is separate from that. Yep. Yep. Leave the dogs home, says Jim Combo. You really think they want to walk through all of that? No. I, I agree with I, I agree with you, Jim. I, first of all, mine tend to bark in if they in a big crowd, so I don't think it would it certainly well, we could never do it in the BCEC. If we ever get to a point where we have a large outdoor show, maybe you do it. But uh, so Audrey says she's never brought the pups to a show or a dealership. Interesting. I can't believe how old her grandson is getting. Can you go back? To, look at look at that guy. Which one? Where? The, the um, grandson there um, of Audrey. Audrey, Audrey. Boom. Oh. Is he now, Audrey? Is he two? Two and a half? Something like that. Oh, but Walter did go by the booth. Did you say hello to Patrick uh -huh. or Andy? And tell me, yeah. you know what? So did you read Audrey's note? She says, I have the worst behaved pup in creation. I'd love to introduce him to Bob. Well, only, if you, only if you pay you $5, Audrey. Only five bucks for dogs? That's cheap. Well, that's what I'm recommending. Oh, $5 per dog, yeah. I yeah. have three Cavaliers. And Jim, what the hell's a Cavalier? It's just like what you got, Zagami. 
No, I got multi. These are multi pools. All those dogs are look. They all look alike. Those little ones. So, 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 what are you saying? Jim's got small dogs also. He's got those little ones there. The little kind that can fit in a glove compartment. So, so. yeah, this this one fits in my hand. Right. Right. So, where are you? Right. he's going there? See. There he is. Do that. We're in Spaniel family. Laurieanne O'Hare. Hi, Laurieanne. Do we know Laurieanne? Is she new? We do. And I thought we were going to try. I think she was. Weren't you going? Let me see what she has here. I thought she was going. Were you going to Tampa, Laurie, or were you going to try to meet up with us at the Boston show? Because I, I was upstairs with the, uh, the seminars, but apparently we did not get together. But we'll be out there again. So She's new. Laurie, where are you from, Laurie? Just yeah, tell us up, where you're from. She's up here. Yeah. Got a couple of minutes left. Yeah. Um, the show went by so fast. So, folks, well, here's what we're going to do. I think, I think we'll continue it next week because John fed me a lot of stuff <laughs> today that I haven't digested yet. But we well, got, we've got hundreds of photos. Yeah. Photos yeah. And, uh, and some videos. The two long videos, as I said, with uh, Jeff Hirsch and Chad Shepard from Pets RV, they were our two largest exhibitors at the show this year. And we certainly appreciate all their support. So, We'll uh, we'll post those interviews on our regular uh, Facebook page on our Nerve to Facebook page, so you can see those during the week. And I think we'll we'll continue this one more week and uh, talk about those the things. Electric scooters, that's right. There were a, there were tons of electric scooters. Did we see all them? Who had that's that? What Kessler says. Besides the dogs, it's the electric scooters. Traffic scams, especially John, in the supplier buildings. He's he's referring to the older people in their electric right. scooters, right. not not the recreational type for the younger crowd. Right. Let's see, we didn't oh, have no, no, we right, didn't right, have right. to do scooters. Kind of down. Huh? And there were a lot of places that sold them too. Yep. They, yeah, they they looked kind of flimsy, like like two trips and they're gone. Yeah, they but, came in on the last boat from China. But, I'm sure uh, they were good ones. I'm sure they were good. Ari's from Weymouth. Yeah, she was going to try to meet us there. Yeah. Yeah. But Bill Sell says, dog. I think he means dogs of Nerve to Tonight. He has two bull mastiffs. You can't fit those in any of oh, them strollers. Oh, thank you. you need a Chevy Suburban to run those things around. Yep. Yep. All right. So in the, in the meantime, feel free to drop us an email uh, with questions that you had about either show. We will get those together for this weekend. Don't forget, this weekend is Joe Gonzalez and the Hartford Show. Hartford, uh, Connecticut Convention Center of downtown Hartford. You can see all of the, uh, all of the nerve to members that we had up before. Get a chance to see all these folks. Well, and Jim Keenan might be working. Uh, at, yeah, he's doing shows. Jim, we saw at Jim at the Boston show, so you have a good yep. chance you will see him at the Connecticut show, if you've purchased from Jim in the past, he's just doing shows now. He's retired. He's got his own motorhome and finished up a trip uh, to Florida recently. So we had a chance to see him briefly because he was very busy. Busy is the word. So uh, the, That's outlook, the, way it should be. the outlook looks good. Uh, there's some challenges along the way, but there's so many people that want RVs. I think it's going to be another great year. So if you haven't bought and by the way, the last thing we'll say, if ever there was a great time to buy an RV, it's right wow. now. The sale prices were amazing. The dealers have full inventory. So between the shows and their upcoming open houses, if you're in the market, this is the year to trade or this is the year to buy. No question about it. Absolutely. All right. So All right. have a great night, everyone. So nice to see you again. Special thanks again to Bill and Bernie for sitting in for us last week. And we will see you next week. And maybe if we can swing this deal, we'll get down to Hartford this weekend and see somebody down there. Okay. Good night, everybody. See you down the road. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.